Thanks, Cole. It's a real pleasure to be here. Uh, once again with CETA. CETA does a great job. Very important role in our community. Go back to the starting in 2008. We won government in a surprised election uh, because people thought we, they, were missing out on the benefits of the boom. They saw a government with unlimited opportunities, unheralded opportunities, and a government awash with money. But the perception was that uh, the place was falling apart. Hospitals were clapped out, schools didn't have teachers, blackouts were common, and Perth was known as Dellsville. We were elected to fix it, and we set about rebuilding the city and the regions, building the infrastructure for the future, revamping government services. We now have a vibrant city, which is a destination, a tourist destination of itself. It is no longer Dellsville. Our kids are no longer leaving in droves from Melbourne and elsewhere. They're staying here. We have great hospitals, quite a few of them. Schools, even more. We have revitalized the regions. Back in 2008, Headland, Caratha looked like downtown Detroit. No activity. They are a vibrant one, and young families are moving back to the Pilbara. We have done that in the face of considerable economic headwinds in recent times, in particular the collapse of our revenue, royalty receipts, uh, perversions of GST, and the substantial shift from investment to production, where we had over 100,000 people come to our state to build the LNG assets and other things. When those projects ended, their jobs were gone. The only way you could avoid it is not have the boom in the first place. That, that would be stupid. We'd done this not by intervention, intervening in the market, places, labor proposals, but to do it, we've, we've done this by providing the infrastructure and the regulatory regime that allows the private sector to build on our strengths, create jobs, create growth. We've opened up retail shopping, giving people choice and flexibility with their own lives. We made it easier for miners to find and mine their tenements. In fact, we have the most open regulatory regime for mining in the world. We support GM crops. We support uranium mining. We support fracking onshore and off. We make no apologies for this. We're not afraid of them. New technologies create opportunities and jobs. Two things the farmers want most, good gene technology and water. We are providing both. We have built the productive economic infrastructure for the community, gateway for logistics, EQ for tourism, the stadium, the hospitals in Perth Freightlink, and the Ord Stage 2, and irrigation up and down our long coastline so farmers in our dry climate can get water. We don't tear up contracts and put the state's economic reputation at risk. We don't tear up jobs. We are not ruled by the mob. Now the challenge is to keep the growth going in face of fiscal constraints. The cha challenge for the next government is, how do you invest in infrastructure of the future? How do you fund uh, the changes in the government services? How do you facilitate and diversify the economy without building on additional debt and deficits? It's a challenge. I think Ben and I will agree there's only three really ways. You could fudge it, but that you get caught out in the end after the election. Uh, there are three ways. And the first one is expenses growth. It's a crucial one, a necessary one. And we have the runs on the board. When we came in the government in 2008, the public sector had expanded by 30 percent over the labor period, a major, major expansion in the public sector. Wages growth, salary growth was growing at 13 percent, rapid growth. We have pulled that down slowly over the period of time whilst increasing frontline services. So, so today, salary bill is growing at 2.4 percent. Over the last two years and over the forward estimates, we restrained expenditure growth to the lowest in 20 years, salary growth the lowest in 30 years. It wasn't easy. Anybody who has done that in business and public sector knows how difficult it is. 
and we have done it by a wide range of reforms, zero base budget in all departments, five waves of voluntary redundancies. Uh, we, one thing that we call workplace reform where we basically rebase all EBA announcements. We also have gone and contracted out prisons, hospitals, PPPs, and schools. We have used the private sector to provide it, and we have had the most largest contracting out to the nonprofit sector ever. Since 2012, June 2012, there has been no growth in public service numbers. Now, you can go out, as Labor has proposed, to cut the top 20 percent of uh, SES senior executive service. That's 100 people out of over 110,000. But you know, we're not going to do that. The public sector needs the best people possible, whether they're high paid or what. This is a very, public sector is an essential service. We need the best people we can. You also don't do this by, in one hand, uh, eliminating 100 people from the SES and at the same time promising to appoint 450 plus digital educational assistants they cross out. You have to go and do the hard yards, not in the media, but in the ERC. We have uh, also run an asset sale program and have expand and plan to expand it. We've sold $2.2 billion worth of assets so far. We have another regime based, focused on Western power, but it also includes the Utah multi-user facility. The legislation is through Parliament. The next government take it up and do it. And the Northwest Integrated Assets of Horizon. We think both those last two will pull in about a billion dollars in pay down debt. So we come to this and we put together a package to the people, which we're taking to the election, the sale of Western Power. This is not a radical move. Every state has been doing this, including Labor's mentor state, Victoria, who went to the last election proposing to sell the Port of Melbourne. They did so, and now they are rolling out, as we propose to do, recycling the monies from the Port of Fremantle to rail assets across Melbourne. Not radical. Now, Western Power is along STEM's assets. As you will know, we are proposed to sell 51% of that. We're going to sell it to super funds and to Australians. Uh, the state will retain 49%. It will be in, listed on the stock exchange. We expect forecast to get a total $11 billion. So this, we start this campaign with $12 billion to allocate to either debt reduction or asset recycling. That's what needs to be done. Western Power is a regulated asset. Prices, safety, reliability cannot will not be compromised by change of ownership. It structures ownership neutral. We plan to move the regulation from the ERA in Western Australia to the Australian Economic Regulator, who ultimately is CEO or head of it is Rod Sims, the head of the ACCC. And as he made quite clear in response to some propaganda by the union movement, that he supports the sale of Western power because it's a well-regulated asset. And he believes private enterprise will drive efficiencies and lower the price over time. Going forward, you have to find an additional source. If you want to invest in the infrastructure of the future, you have to find an additional source of revenue. And the Liberals come to this election honestly, openly, with a plan. That leaves revenue raising. Well, I can commit that the, Western Australia, the Liberal government, national government, will not raise or introduce any other levies or taxes. We're not going there. We are, right now, one of the lower tax states in the nation, and we will continue that going forward. Labor has not made that commitment. I, I wait to hear from it. In fact, they have announced a new tax this week called value capture. It's a new property tax, I assume, which consumers will eventually pay. As you know, if you put a tax on something in the business, it eventually gets passed down, not in the profits of the business necessarily, but it gets passed down to the consumers of it. Got to tell you, what is that for? We come to this election with a solid plan, a record of restraint and expenditure. It is easy to say, as Labor has said, on expenditure restraint, me too, 
I find it a bit ironical in that over the last four years and three and a half as treasurer, labor has resisted every move of expenditure we've done every move. In fact, they are still criticizing us for supposedly cutting education expenditure. By the way, over our term, educational expenditure went up 70 percent. Not too many cuts there. But they have to show if they're not going to do what we do in terms of expenditure cut, they're going to have to show something different. This is tough. This is difficult, particularly if you're a union-based party. In fact, it's pushing credibility. So we face the future with a solid plan around asset sales, tight expenditure, no taxes. We, going forward, as we have, are committed to growth. The Liberal National Government, the Barnett Government, is committed to growth in the long term. No one can question that. And we're building on our strengths. We're not abandoning the mining sector. It is our core. It is where our wealth comes from to a main extent, but we have always been, from the start, focused on other aspects of our strengths, agriculture, tourism, construction, defense industries. We are about setting the regulations right, providing the infrastructure for the future, providing the necessary services and government services for human capital, uh, for crime and other issues, so the private sector can the public can live well, get on and create jobs, and create the future of Western Australia. We have absolutely confidence in the Western Australian economy, its strength to the day, and its future. We w have gone through a significant structural adjustment, but we will come through this, not only with the finance, much uh, state finances back in surplus, lower debt, but we will return to substantial both employment growth and overall growth. We have overseen 180,000 additional jobs in our period of government, $600 billion invested in productive assets, and they are world competitive and will go on, and a 40 percent increase in GDP over our watch. I expect to continue that path forward. We have done well. We will continue to focus on what we do well and we will provide under, underpinnings for future growth in the Western Australian economy. Thanks very much.